dear students in uh, last presentation on ischemic heart disease i discussed with you the pathophysiology of ischemic heart disease that is different risk factors which are responsible for formation of coronary artery plaque we discussed different types of plaques uh, the plaque which cause a stable angina and the plaque which cause the unstable angina myocardial infarction or non st elevation myocardial infarctions in today's presentation i will discuss with you acute coronary syndrome this is a condition which is caused by either erosion of the plaque or rupture of the plaque leading to complete occlusion of the coronary artery with a thrombus in unstable angina there is erosion of the soft plaque the plaque which is rich in fat which is rich in inflammatory cell uh, which has got a thin cap and uh, if this thin cap erodes then platelet starts depositing on the surface of the plaque and now these platelets then release a substance which is called thromboxane A2 which leads to further accumulation of platelets on the surface of the plaque and then in addition there is coronary artery spasm and so there is ischemia of the myocardium and then the patient start feeling the symptoms of myocardial ischemia in the form of sternal chest pain uh, which radiates to neck or the arm or the patients have the symptoms of uh, ongoing ischemia like breathlessness like epigastric discomfort the unstable angina by definition is angina which is new onset angina or which is angina on top of previous stable angina and uh, the patient has a pain which is longer in duration which is more severe than the pain of uh, patients who are suffering from stable angina which radiates to a new position so if the patient was pain was the patient was having pain behind the sternum noise starts feeling pain in the neck and this pain is present at rest and then it partially responds to uh, sublingual nitrates and this pain lasts for more than 20 minutes so unstable angina by definition to the pain which is more severe which lasts longer which dis- responds to the sublingual nit- nitrates partially and this patient needs immediate hospitalization because this patient are prone to suffer from acute myocardial infarction and then non st elevation myocardial infarction is a condition which is similar to unstable angina but these patients have in addition to the symptoms and signs of unstable angina elevated cardiac enzymes the markers of myocardial injury like uh, they seek mb uh, like positive drop i test or drop t test acute myocardial infarction is a different condition in which there is rupture of the unstable plaque followed by deposition of the platelets and on top of that platelets there is formation of a red thrombus and this red thrombus completely occludes the coronary artery so all these three conditions are emergency conditions 
and the patient needs hospitalization. But of all these three, I think acute myocardial infarction is a condition in which time is myocardial. The patient needs to be hospitalized as early as possible so that he is treated and immediately the thrombus is removed by primary angioplasty or if the primary angioplasty is not available then the thrombolytic therapy can be given. So if the patient have a severe chest pain which is longer, which is unusual and which remains for uh, more than 20 minutes, he should always call ambulance and he should be shifted to the hospital for the treatment. So this is the three different conditions which falls under the category of acute coronary syndrome. So this is the schematic diagram on the left side. You see the artery is partially occluded. There is plug erosions and there is platelet thrombus. And on the right side, there is complete occlusion of the coronary artery by a thrombus, which in this picture is yellow, but actually it's a red thrombus. This is just a schematic diagram. So on the right side of, this, uh, of your uh, picture, you can see that the coronary artery is completely excluded. This is an emergency situation which needs immediately uh, immediate hospitalization and immediate treatment. So, by definition, unstable angina is a new onset angina or angina on top of stable angina. In these patients, the pain is present at rest or minimal exertion. Remember, the angina, which was stable angina in patients, uh, which I discussed with you, the patient was feeling pain on exertion, so on demands, like climbing upstairs, running, jogging. Uh, but in unstable angina, the pain is present on minimal exertion, like go, going to the bathroom at rest, uh, angina after meals, angina on lying flat, which we call it angina decubitus which is the chest pain in the patient with lying flat or the patient feels the chest pain after meals which call its postprandial angina. All these conditions, they put load on the, my on the myocardium, they increase myocardial demand and uh, the patient feels chest pain. The pain is more severe. It's, it lasts longer, more than 10 minutes, it lasts uh, 20 minutes, and then there is a radiation to a new site. So, so the patient was having chest pain uh, only behind the sternum. Now he starts feeling pain to that arm, radiation or radiation to the neck, or radiation to both arm. They say that this patient is now unstable. Then there are Angina equivalents. You must remember angina equivalents, particularly in diabetic populations and elderly patients. They present with you with uh, unusual symptoms like uh, fatigue, like breathlessness on walking, like dyspepsia, and they you find that they they feel uh, no pain at all. These are the atypical presentations and uh, you must keep in mind angina equivalents and you must treat these patients uh, as a case of unstable angina. And then there are signs of ongoing ischemia like diaphoresis, pale, cool skin, uh, tachycardia, the blood pressure may be transiently high or may be low if the myocardial contraction uh, is poor. And then there are transient 
basal palpitations, transient uh, gallop in the form of S3 or S4, or a transient murmur, which disappears once the ischemia is over. So these are the signs of ongoing myocardial ischemia. I discussed with you in the previous slide that in acute myocardial infarction, there is total occlusion of one or more coronary arteries due to rupture of the atheromatous plaque and then formation of a red thrombus. So if this situation is not treated in the next one hour or two, there is death of myocardial cell which leads to subsequent uh, heart failure uh, in these patients. These patients with the acute myocardial infarction, like the patient with the unstable angina, they feel sternal chest pain and they will use the word like that somebody is sitting at the chest, there is pressure on the head, chest, the sense of constriction around the chest, they clenches their uh, fist in front of the sternum. This is a very important sign of ischemia. And then there are signs of squeezing of neck, the symptoms that they feel that there's somebody is constricting their neck, sense of suffocation. Now in patient with myocardial infarction, the chest pain lasts for more than 30 minutes and it is not relieved by sublingual nitrates. The pain is only relieved once the artery is opened up, otherwise the patient will continue to suffer from chest pain. They suffer from breathlessness, confusion if there is fall in blood pressure and there is a poor cerebral perfusion. Or they suffer from peripheral embolism. This happens in the later stages of myocardial infarction, say, once there is a formation of thrombus in the left ventricle. It presented you with stroke. You examine this patient and you see that there is tachycardia, the blood pressure may be low, the patient may be in cardiogenic shock and by definition the cardiogenic shock is low blood pressure and there is cerebral confusion. The patient is confused because of low cerebral perfusion and then there is also oliguria and the respiratory rate may be high and then there may be gallop sound, heart murmurs because of rupture of the uh, interventricular septum or the rupture of the papillary muscles. And then on auscultation of the chest, there may be crepitation, which is a sign of left ventricular failure. So the patient with myocardial infarction can present to you with chest pain or with complications of myocardial infarction. They may die suddenly while at home and the commonest cause the commonest cause of death, sudden death is arrhythmia, which is ventricular fibrillation. So and this ventricular fibrillation occurs in the early hours, uh, in the early portion of the myocardial infarction, in the early hours of myocardial ischemia. And uh, then this breathlessness due to pump failure confusion due to cardiogenic shock, peripheral embolism because of thrombus formation in the left ventricle. And again, the heart murmurs due to the rupture of interventricular septum. So they present with chest pain or with complications of myocardial infarction. Of course, you uh, send the blood for complete count and then for uh, cholesterol, blood sugar, uh, and then blood urea. If, if the patient is diabetic and you want to rule out uh, kidney disease, and then you also order the serum cardiac biomarkers, uh, which I already discussed with you the TROP T, TROP I and CKMB. ECG will show ST elevation. 
in the territory of the vessel which is occluded and echo will show you segmental wall motion abnormalities. Coronary NG has to be done as early as possible in acute myocardial infarction patients to perform primary balloon angioplasty so that the myocardium is safe. Complications, I discussed with you the pump failure due to necrosis of the myocardial cells, post-myocardial infarction angina, cardiac genic shock, which by definition is low blood pressure, confusion due to decreased cerebral perfusion, ventricular aneurysm is the dilate, persistent dilatation of the myocardium, particularly at apex, and this is persistent and the complication of um, ventricular aneurysm is arrhythmia, heart failure, and thrombus formation. Sometimes the ventricle wall may rupture due to necrosis and embolism, embolism is due to thrombus formation in aneurysmal segment of myocardial infarction. And I discussed with you that the commonest arrhythmias in myocardial infarction may be radio arrhythmias or tachyarrhythmias. Uh, there may be tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation. Ventricular fibrillation needs immediate DC cardioversion. And uh, ventricular tachycardia, if air is leading to hypotension, should be also treated with uh, DC cardioversion. Then the patient may have uh, mm, sinus bradycardia or Mobis type 1, type 2 heart block or complete heart block. If the patient is having complete heart block or Mobis 2 heart block, he needs a temporary pacemaker. So these are the different complications of acute myocardial infarction. Uh, you see on the right side of the picture, there is the red, uh, red, red portion. You can see there is complete necrosis and then see on the right side there is ST elevation. But if the ischemia is only in the subendocardial part of the myocardium, then there will be ST depression. So you can have inpatient with acute myocardial infarction, the evidence of ST elevation as well as ST depression. We call it ischemia at discus. So if there is ST elevation in the LAD directory, left anterior descending artery directory, you may have ST uh, depression in the uh, right coronary artery. So in this uh, picture, you can nicely see that there is ST elevation in lead 1, 2, V, 4, as well as in lead AVL. So this is anterolateral lead 1 also, lead V1, 2, V4, and AVL. And there is ST depression in lead 2 and 3. So there is total occlusion of LED, LED artery and the right coronary artery is showing ischemia at discus. There is ST depression. So there is subendocardial ischemia in 2, 3, and AVF, which is the territory of right coronary artery. And there is complete occlusion of the coronary artery with ST elevation in lead 1 to V4, which is the territory of left anterior descending artery. You should admit your patient with acute myocardial infarction, check the vital signs, pulse, blood pressure, respiratory rate, temperature, administer oxygen, give aspirin, and then clopidogrel, uh, 600 milligrams, give sublingual nitrates, 
the pain is not relieved, give morphine, but you must immediately plan for primary angioplasty. And if the primary angioplasty is not available, you should go for thrombolytic therapy. Uh, if the patient is having a tachycardia or high blood pressure, you can also give intravenous beta blockers. The complication I discussed with you are uh, cardiogenic shock for which to give uh, inotropic agents or sometimes you have to support the ventricle with intraiotic balloon. Uh, for pulmonary edema, you have to give fusamide immediately, uh, intravenously uh, in high dosage. You have to give oxygen, you have to give vasodilators, you have to give nitrates intravenously to reduce the preload. And uh, sometimes you have to go for endotracheal intubation and uh, you have to put the patient on ventilators in acute pulmonary edema and cardiogenic shock. So I have discussed with you balloon angioplasty and uh, sometimes if the, the, there is diffuse disease or multiple vessels are involved, the patient is not fit for coronary angioplasty. The patient is having left main coronary artery blockage or multiple vessels involved and then go for coronary artery bypass grafting. This is how you perform percutaneous coronary intervention. You put in a catheter and then you push a balloon across the narrow segment, you dilate it, and then put in a stent. This is balloon inflated across the atraumatous plot. In coronary artery bypass grafting, you implant uh, the venous grafts, as you see on the right side of the picture, between aorta and right coronary artery, or you go for an arterial graft, uh, the left interior memory artery imparting into the LAD, left interior descending artery. The arterial grafts, they last longer. Whereas the venous graft, because it's slow circulation, may close in the sub subsequent five to ten years. Again, after angioplasty, stenting, or coronary artery bypass grafting, all your patients should be on aspirin, beta blockers, because it has been shown that the patient with acute myocardial infarction. The prescription of beta blockers reduces subsequent mortality. And then, if he is in heart failure, it should be on diuretics, ACE inhibitors, because again, in patients with acute myocardial infarction and heart failure, the ACE inhibitor prescription reduces cardiovascular mortality and morbidity. Then, the other new drug, which is Everbridine in patients with heart failure have subsequently, it has been seen that it reduces hospital recurrent uh, hospitalization and reduction of mortality um, due to heart failure. So thank you very much. This is all about ischemic heart disease. And in the next presentation, uh, I will be discussing with you hypertension and then thereafter, heart failure. Thank you very much.